A Washington Post story here by Sean Sullivan, uh, and it was contributed to by a guy named Dave Weigel. Why some Republicans are feeling shame. What is this about, Snurdly? Is this, uh, this Republican shame story is about embarrassment over both Trump and Cruz? Is that what it is? More. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Look, I want to repeat this again. I, I mentioned this late last week, and it was a holiday week for some. Yeah, it was a big holiday. It, it seemed like everybody I know from New York was down here last week. It was just it was incredible. So a lot of people were on vacation. What's going on in the Republican primary? That number that you all know, 1,237. The... New York Times had a story last week, two weeks ago now, that starting April 5th with the Wisconsin primary begins a 100-day plan by the party to deny both Trump and Cruz the nomination. Now, they say it's designed to stop Trump, but by extension, it's designed to stop Cruz. They don't want Cruz, and it's evident when you listen to them. The point that they are going to make, and these are the Rules Committee types, They are going to write rules and attempt to establish the following. If neither Trump nor Cruz get to 1,237, they will both be considered ineligible for the nomination because since neither got to 1,237, that will effectively mean they have been rebuked by Republican voters. And the fact that neither candidate gets to 1237 is going to be seen by the establishment, the people that run the RNC, as the opportunity they've long wanted to choose a nominee at the convention. And it will be maybe somebody who ran but got out early, or maybe it'll be somebody who didn't even run. Paul Ryan seems to be a popular name being bandied about in this scenario. Now, I know what you're saying. Wait a minute. If if neither Trump nor Cruz get to 1237, why are they disqualified? Well, they're going to be said to be disqualified. Remember, they're going to try to establish the fact that both have been rejected by voters since neither won the nomination by rule. The rule says you need 1237. Yeah, but, but Trump people. Yeah, but, but Trump got to like. 1150. Well, that's not 1237. Yeah, but 1150, that's a lot of votes. You can't just. Yes, we can. He didn't get 1237, so he may as well have gotten zero. And the Trump people are going to have a cow. And the Cruz people are going to do the same thing. Wait a minute. Okay, so maybe neither candidate got to 1237, but we're both in the running. We can still be chosen. To... No, that's the point of doing a contested convention is to deny, to deny these two front runners. The Republican Party, if they have their dream, don't want either of these two. And frankly, they don't want Cruz more than they want Trump, but they don't want either one. So I'm just warning you, brace yourself. That's that's what they're angling for. And so the effort's going to be deny Trump 1237 under the belief that no way Cruz can get there on it. He'd have to win 83 percent of the delegates left to get to 1237 on his own. Trump, about 55%. And the whole strategy is to deny Trump. They don't want these two guys, folks. And that's how they're going to do it. That's how they're going to try to do it. Now, Pat Buchanan says if they do that, a bunch of these Trump voters are just going to vanish. You're never going to see them on Election Day. And the Republican Party can forget about them forever. But you know what? What's happening on the Democrat side, the same thing can happen. This, this, what, what's going on over there with crazy Bernie and Hillary, Hillary isn't winning anything, and she's piling up delegates. Bernie won three more states over the weekend, one of them important, state of Washington. Uh, by important, I mean big number of delegates. And nobody's talking about it, but you know, if if Bernie keeps winning and they just give him the shaft and yank him the hell away, don't be surprised if a bunch of Democrat voters have the same reaction toward the Democrat Party that Trump voters will have toward the Republicans. The, The media wants you to believe that 
the Democrats are going to be firmly and fully united in electoral bliss with the nomination of Hillary Clinton. But that party is not unified behind her. She is not universally loved, adored, respected by any stretch. Bernie has gobs of anti-establishment fans in his camp. Now, let's add one thing to this. FBI. Grand jury. Evidence. Hillary's email server. Trafficking and classified data. Will there be an indictment or not? What happens if there isn't? If there's a lot of evidence, it's going to get leaked, folks. If they don't indict and the FBI has tons of evidence worthy of an indictment, somebody's going to leak it because somebody's going to be royally ticked off at the FBI. It will leak if there's no indictment. Now we're told the FBI wants to talk to Mrs. Clinton, wants to interview her. Some people are saying, well, that proves they've got nothing. And they're going to try to get her and catch her in a lie and charge her with that like they did Martha Stewart. And then it could be that Obama is waiting to see if her, if her support begins to slip even a little bit. Maybe he will tell Lynch over at DOJ, okay, go ahead and indict her. I'll stand aside. Indictment comes. That's not guaranteed Mrs. Clinton gets out. But if that were to happen, here comes Biden, because they're not going to let Crazy Bernie anywhere near this. The Clintons, the Clintons are warning Crazy Bernie to change his tone. And a super delegate for Hillary is deciding to go for Bernie because that's what the people in his district want. We will be back tomorrow in 21 hours, revved and ready to go. We'll see you then.